and welcome to another edition of Shed Talk, my weekly magazine video series looking at the keeping, breeding and showing of cage birds with a special focus as always on the exhibition um, style uh, budgerigar. Um, first of all a quick apology, um, I had a, um, uh, a canary nest feather show at Oxford 1910 uh, earlier on in the week um, but I was so busy <laughs> Um, talking to uh, some of the five breeders who had brought lots and lots of birds along um, about, you know, trying to identify what was a good baby five and what was a less a less um, useful one, um, that I actually forgot completely to do and get any video of it. So my apologies for not getting any video of any of the birds um, from that show. We will get some from the uh, show in, in July. So. We'll have, we'll have a little look at some birds, some, some decent birds then anyway. So that's my um, apology, first of all. Um, but what we have got in for a store for you for this particular episode is um, we're going to nip outside and ring the four baby fives. Um, now, in the, I have did ring them before, and I but I didn't actually show me ringing them because it was the first time I've ever rung um, fives. So... Um, I thought I just, you know, I was a bit nervous about doing it. So, um, but I think this time we'll go out and I'll actually show you um, how I use the um, split rings to ring the young baby fives. And as part of that, what I thought I'd do before we go out there and do that is we'll have a look at the difference between a closed ring and a split ring and maybe talk just very briefly not a big big chat but just very briefly about um, uh, some of the benefits of ringing close ringing birds or split ringing um, birds so um, I thought that's what we would do in this episode so and there was also I picked something up at um, the Oxford 1910 Canary Nest Feather Show and we'll have a look at that in a, uh, a little while or those in a little while uh, but as always if you do enjoy the video don't forget to hit the like button um, and of course if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel then do click on the subscribe or the subscription to help the channel to grow all notifications then you know hit the bell right so let's talk very briefly then about um, the difference between closed and um, split rings so let's have a quick look at the um, the two types of ring that I'm using in the shed. Um, the first one of these is um, the uh, closed ring that I put on the budgery bar. Um, and by closed ring, it merely means that um, the ring is uh, doesn't have any opening in it other than somewhere for the foot to go to go through. And this, there's a, I suppose, a couple of things points to point out with this. So, the first one is it does mean because there's, because it's a solid ring, it can only be fitted to the bird um, when the bird is actually um, fairly young. I normally fit to the budgery gar somewhere between eight and ten days. You could get them on after that. Um, if I've got them on any earlier than eight days, I, I find that they tend to fall off, or there's a risk that they fall off. And then you're hunting in the nest box to find them and put them back on again. So, um, so that's the first thing. And then obviously once they're on, um, it, they're, they're quite difficult to get off. You can get ring cutters to cut them off uh, in the event that, that you need to. Um, but in most cases, they're on and they stay on. Uh, the type of closed ring that I get are um, purchased from the Budgery Gar Society. Um, and the ring... Uh, changes colour every year and you'll see that both of the rings that I've got are um, a, a fairly dark blue this time both for the budgery guards and the canary, canaries um, that dictates uh, 2003 so it just means that anybody looking at a bird particularly the judge who is looking at a bird to try and work out whether it's a this year's bird or an any age bird um, has a relatively easy way to identify it through the colour of the ring um, the 
Budgery Glass Society insists that, that if you're going to enter their shows and win, win their awards, I'll emphasise win, win their awards, um, that you, they need to be clothes rung with the um, Budgerigar emblem on there, so bought from the Budgerigar Society, um, and they will therefore contain, like I say, the emblem of the Budgerigar Society, um, the year that um, the bird was run, so in this case 23, so along with the colour there's also a no, a left, um, some numbers on there. There's then a unique ring number for every member of the Budgerigar Society, and then followed then by um, the actual uh, ring number for that year. So starting off at one and then working your way through to, you know, however many birds that you've actually rung. Um, so I suppose the benefit of, so whilst you have to ring these earlier, or ring the chick earlier while it's still in the nest box with these, um, the benefit is, is that there can be no cheating. You know, once this ring is on, um, uh, it means that that bird is a, in this case, a 2023 rung bird, and there would be no way I could get this onto an older bird and, you know, sell it off as being uh, a younger bird. So, um, so that's one of the benefits of the closed ring. I use metal rings rather than plastic. In both cases, closed and um, split rings, you can get them in metal and on, or, or in plastic. Um, I prefer metal mainly because it, I, I think, personal opinion, I think that the numbering lasts longer. In some cases, you'll get to a ring and you'll try, you know, three or four years old bird, you'll try to identify what the ring number is and it would have worn out and I find it tends to wear out, wear out quicker on plastic rings. But either way, from the budgery gas side's point of view, I think they now only issue um, metal rings. They did go through a period where they were issuing metal and plastic, but I think that has stopped. I've no doubt someone will correct me in the comments if that's not the case. Um, so I purchased those from, like I say, from the Budgery Gas Society, and those are what I use for the um, Budgery Gas. You don't have to purchase them from the Budgery Gas Society, but as I, you know, previously said, if you want to show um, your birds and win awards, Budgery Gas awards that they present, uh, then they need to be closed run with a Budgery Gas Society issued ring. So that's the first type. The second type we've got then is um, the ones I'm currently using for the canaries. So in the, for the canaries I'm using um, split rings uh, and I, all I did here, you can, um, as I understand it, buy these from either the Five Fancy or the Five Canary Council or the Five Canary Association, I think that's the two. There are two different associations for um, five. Um, you can buy the rings from them. I chose not to. Um, so I, because I'm not going to show at any of their major shows anyway, certainly not at the moment. So I chose to just buy my rings um, uh, from one of the um, ring providers. I think I used Avian ID. I think I mentioned that when I um, first ordered these. So, um, the, for the Five Canary, and again, this is as I understand it, Five Canary doesn't have to be rung at all to be shown, and um, it's very much a trust thing with the person showing. So, if they enter it in a and flight is passed, um, then the judge will trust that that bird is a this year's bird. Um, so, there's a lot more trust in the Five Canary fancy than there is in the budgery gal fancy but there you go so um so the split ring then you can see that it still comes in the same I've got it in a similar color so blue for 2023 um and the main difference is that split ring is as it says it's not a solid ring um it actually has a um small split in it which enables you to put it onto the bird's leg um virtually i suppose at any age so there wouldn't be a problem fitting that to the bird's leg at almost any age. Um, so that's the advantage that you don't have to worry about, you know, catching them at that bang on that date. 
two days off the face of the bloody ring from my point of view normally. Um, if you, you know, miss a bird, you can always get one on a bit later. Um, the um, disadvantage, I think, is that they are a little bit more fiddly, in that once you've got them over, you've then got to crimp them shut. Now, you can buy um, special tools to fit the size of the ring for, um, that you've got. So there'll be a tool that will fit this size ring. Um, and you can place the ring over the leg, crimp it with that, and that um, it will fit into the side like a little indent, making the circle up when you close it together. I haven't got one of those, and I currently use just long nose pliers. And I find that the long nose pliers um, have worked fine for me in terms of closing the ring off. So that's um, the difference between closed and a split ring. Um, for these, all I have on these is just 2023 to sort of remind me that it's. It's, well, that's when I rung it, and then just a the number of the bird, uh, or the ring that I'm using. So, and again, it will start at one and work through. Um, so, I've spoken a little bit about the ring. So, the, the main, my main purpose of ringing, apart from needing them to show it, the Budgery Golf Society shows, was to win the awards. In the unlike, very, very unlikely event that I won in here, the major awards for the, um, it, one of the Budgery Gar shows. Um, but the main reason that we ring birds is to be able to easily identify it and therefore be able to identify the parents and its, um, uh, you know, its overall parentage and therefore we're not crossing the birds too closely together so we're not getting brother and sister and putting them together unless we want to so we know what the bird came from, what its ancestry is, what its pedigree is and therefore we can make sure that when we're line breeding um, we're not breeding too closely together and that's the same with the budgerigars and the same with the um, fives so there you go that's a little bit about the two different style of rings that i use what we'll do now um, now i've spoken about that we'll go out to the finch and five um, shed and we'll have a look at ringing those young fives in five from breeding to bench So, in the Finch and Five Flight, uh, time to ring those four chicks. As you can see um, in this short clip, uh, the four chicks are doing really, really, uh, really, really well. I think we've got um, another two um, clear in there, and I think two um, variegated. But we'll have a, there's still plenty of time for them to feather up. But as you can see them in that short clip. Um, so let's get them out and we'll have a go at um, putting a ring on them. So I think you can see here, um, or at least I hope you can, um, how I, um, the difference between ringing the um, budgery guards with the closed ring and then ringing the um, five canaries with a split ring. As you can see the ring slips over the, the leg really really easily. Um, and we have the um, long nose pliers uh, that literally just, you know, clamp, crimp the two parts of the um, ring together. Um, occasionally, um, I have to double, just double check that the ring is fully closed, um, but really, really easy, much easier than I expected it to be. Um, I could ring these slightly older, um, I've no doubt. Uh, I will check that the ring hasn't fallen off on these over the next couple of days. They shouldn't do, they're plenty plenty big enough for the rings to be able to stay on, but we'll, I will just double check. Um, and as I say, really, really easy and we've got four new chicks all wrong and um, ready to put in the um, stock book or the record book. So that's ringing the fives. Well, we are back in the um, main budget, as I said, but we're not quite finished with five from um, proving to bench. Uh, because, as I said at the beginning, uh, at the um, Canary Nest Brothers show, I was very lucky, very lucky that um, uh, Dave Tobel, who actually is the provider of one of my stock birds, um, had some uh, training cages 
the um, sell at a very, very, very reasonable price. I mean, unbelievably reasonable price. So I have picked up three training cages and a box. Um, I was the naivety here of me with the um, price was I did ask um, Dave what the difference was between this um, uh, training cage and um, a show cage, and they said condition. So. Um, the fact that this isn't in brilliant condition makes it a training cage rather than a show cage, um, but otherwise there is no difference. Um, he did say to me that they're not in very bad, you know, not in terrible condition. They actually look like they're in reasonable condition to me. Um, so with a clean out, I probably can use these for my local shows. Um, if I get, you know, if I do eventually decide to um, uh, get into the five cinema um serious way i suppose um then i will get some uh, better cages and we will um just yeah, then we'll just use these as um, training cages so very very fortunate to pick these up they even came to apart from coming with the um perches already in there but they also all three of them came with these little top up printers so I don't even have to worry about about that. What I've got to do now um, is work out how to fit these to the cages that we've got outside. Um, and once I've done that, I can start to train the birds to come in and out of the out of the um, stock cage into the show cage, the training cage. Um, and we can start then getting the birds used to being in a um, show cage. Uh, I hope, I hope that in the next episode we'll have got a couple of the birds, we'll be able to get a couple of the birds out, maybe even all three of the um, uh, young baby fives out, and we'll just pop them up on the side in here um, and have a, um, a good look at them and see what we, what I make of them. I'll get the pictorial standard out and maybe together I'll talk about what that I see with my very... Um, you know, novice eyes for the fight and um, maybe in the comments once you do that people can tell me what um, they think of what I've put up. So there we go, very lucky as I say that we've got some um, training cages, great show cages for the um, fight. Certainly helps me out, certainly helps me out. So once again I'll thank Dave again for being so kind as to giving me these or providing me these. Sorry about that, went off camera, went off shot, um, providing me those at a very, like I say, a very, very reasonable price. So thanks again, Dave. Um, and that, so that's it from for um, five from Green to Ben. Well, I'll finish off with a quick look at the young um, Beverly guys. So I hope you remember that there were three chicks in the um, nest box that's behind me on cage um, number one, and. Um, we weren't quite sure, because we had moved some eggs from another cage into there, um, I wasn't quite sure um, which birds were which when they hatched. And remember that we had one, I think, was dead in shell and one, um, oh sorry, one didn't hatch but wasn't fed and one I found in the bottom of the cage um, and I couldn't revive it. Uh, I did say um, when we were moving them across that one of the ways of identifying the birds in this nest box as to whether they belong to this pair or to the or whether they were the foster chicks from the cobalt um, pair um, was whether there was any dark sacks for birds in there. So, as I say, we'll get the nest box out and we'll have a quick look. So as you can see from this, the three birds are in here um, and we've definitely, the first bird which I um, remember saying, I think last week or the week before, but I believe the first bird that kicked the hatch um, was undoubtedly um, one of theirs, and that's a light green. So um, my expectations, my thought that it was one of theirs has been reconfirmed, I think, by the fact that it's a light green. However, the other two birds are both dark factors, and the pair that they're off, I've got no dark factor in them, and therefore those two birds can only be the two eggs at the two full eggs that we fostered from the cobalt pair. 
Um, so we've got another two birds off the cobalt there. You can clearly see, um, uh, looking behind or just above the tail, the very clear difference in colour. We've got uh, a light green and then there are two uh, dark greens. So which means these two, these three birds, we've got one off this pair, one off the green series or the green uh, line and the other two are um, off of my blue line. So there we go, we've got three birds there and we have managed to identify the parents of all three of the birds. Um, I'm a bit concerned that it looks like there might be a little tiny bit of feather plucking here because you can see that a couple of the younger birds, not the oldest one, less so, but the um, younger two birds, the two actually that are the foster birds, um, look like they may have had a little bit of feather plucking, so I just need to keep an eye on that over the next um, few days. I think once they leave the nest box, which I think isn't going to be much longer, um, uh, they should be fine. My guess is, is that it's the hen, but you can never be sure of this, so we'll just keep an eye on both of them. Um, I will have a quick look back in the um, my breeding register to see whether either of these two birds have been part of a pair that I've ever plucked before. So, there we go, that's the birds out of that nest box. So that's the uh, look at, at ringing, a look at the fives and those, I mean, look at how we run those uh, four young um, fives and a look at the youngsters in cage um, number one. The only thing we haven't managed to do in this episode was give an update on the uh, zebras. I will do that in the um, next episode. I promise we'll have a look out there and if I can do I'll get inside the flight and perhaps double check whether we've got anything in any other nest boxes uh, without disturbing them too much. Um, but that will be in the uh, next episode. Oh, they've suddenly gone quiet. That will be in the next episode. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this one, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to comment. Um, and as always, please do stay safe and enjoy your birds.